thanks everybody for uh, for joining joining us today. Um, again, I'm I'm Patrick Oudner, um a BIM leader and educator with the PPI Group and the Seattle office. And um, thank you so much for sharing your time uh, with us today. And hopefully, a lot of the material covered today will apply to some of your uh, current challenges uh, that you're working with on, on your projects. So uh, yeah, let's get started. And so title here is a lot to, lot to swallow, but we'll try to break it down for you within the uh, presentation. Uh, cultivating the global design and construction landscape through BIM collaboration. And so uh, basically the AEC leaders, uh, global leaders, um, are working and creating a paradigm shift in productivity uh, through the, the, the BIM concept. So thanks um, and greetings and welcome everybody. Um, this presentation is for building information modeling for our building information modeling and virtual design construction customers who are engaged using BIM software on all levels and who shape the world through their creations. With over 10 million customers in 185 countries teaching and using BIM and BDC, software is an inspiration to break down silos between disciplines, bring back team collaboration through value-based procurement and promote highly skilled talent to share solutions and at last have high productivity driving the demand. These are a few points that will be emphasized and demonstrated throughout this presentation. Uh, the goal of this uh, demonstration and presentation is to introduce and educate the importance of collaborating between BIM and construction through the life of the project. And at the forefront of this movement, I would like to applaud Autodesk and partners for their commitment in prudent decision making, their time, and the financial investment and education to bring these concepts to life. And again, my name is Patrick Odner, and I am an Autodesk Construction Design BIM specialist, and I want to thank you for sharing your time. Um, within the uh, mid-segment of this presentation, I will be demonstrating uh, two functions uh, within the collaboration tools of Revit. And one will be shared coordinates with Autodat, AutoCAD customers. And the other will be a basic demonstration of clash detection within the Revit model. So let's begin. So productivity is a big word being used these days. Uh, uh, the, the, the basis of this, uh, this whole presentation is, is actually off the um, Economist, and they have a division, a technical division, called the EIU, and it's the Economist Intelligence Unit, and it is um, basically the study uh, that is going to be actually sent out to all of you, all the attendees, at the end of this presentation. Um, they surveyed and interviewed 250 construction industry professionals. And so the goal of the survey was to determine the global causes of current productivity gap in the construction industry. And so the conclusions of this survey are very clear and probably not a surprise to uh, most of the listeners out there. Um, productivity in the construction industry is lagging, defined by low margins, aggressive procurement, and talent shortages and uncertain work pipelines presenting many challenges, especially in the very competitive industry that of AEC. I believe that educating our workforce and harnessing the available technology will give a degree of insulation from the pressures of the market. But it has to start with people, and technology does not solve problems, but people do. So solutions must come from the collaborative effort of all stakeholders across the supply chain, meaning government and the financial industry and people like us. The PPI group is participating in this shift through education, 
uh, customized training and offering leading edge tools to achieve your very best. So mentoring uh, and mentoring our workforce, um, huge, uh, huge thought in this study. Um, the PPI group and partners work closely with the AEC community to help you win more work and deliver projects with more predictability, mitigating high risk of unforeseen conflicts, changes and scheduling delays that can drive up the cost of materials, labor, and the overall project. When you have a collaborative project environment working in BIM, it gives incentive to work interdependently and understand the broad scheme of project goals. So let's take a look at the trends uh, that are impacting the industry. Then we'll talk about how Autodesk software can help you succeed in today's challenging construction industry. So again, the PPI group believes in building information modeling. It's a comprehensive tool alleviating many of the business challenges uh, the AEC community is facing uh, currently. Uh, BIM is an intelligent model based process that provides insight for creating and managing building projects faster, more economically, and with less environmental impact. The manufacturing and aerospace industry, which a lot of you know already, have been implementing this workflow for decades. And so the surge in the building and design construction economy gives us the opportunity to be proud of what we've accomplished in the past, but position ourselves by investing in the future projects. And BIM provides a way to gain greater project insight earlier in the design process to make more informed decisions, creating value at every step of the project lifecycle. Uh, more recent uh, enhancements to BIM technology can provide AEC firms uh, more insight than ever into information about all aspects of the building process and BIM will empower you with new levels of understanding about meaningful business needs you care about the most, and some of which are cost, scheduling, and constructability. When it comes to extended supply chain, BIM can help you share information with the right people at the right time, whether you're at their desk, whether they're at their desk or within the field. So BIM and building industry trends. The global market analysis um, and forecast done by Pike Research in 2012 um, on BIM in, in, in 2012 concluded that for those who are or have been using BIM tools and collaboration techniques for a longer period of time, BIM has proven to be remarkably successful in the quality of the results that it can produce, which I'm sure a lot of you out there have experienced. Uh, also, as the building owners and uh, financiers, BIM has driven costs down and made the estimation process more accurate. Additionally, BIM helps facilitate more visibility and interaction in the overall design build process for owners of a building, enabling them to take a more active role in determining the final outcome of the capital intensive projects. So significant growth in commercial buildings worldwide will create a strong-term market for BIM technologies, as you see the chart illustrates. A more recent study by McGraw-Hill under the Smart Market Report 2014, um, rate of return, it's so basically our percentage of contractors citing BIM benefit is one of the top three in the organization. Um, and of course, reduced errors in omissions comes up as 41% for the projects. Um, by improving information, the flow of information, and taking a model-based or central model approach to the projects, you can realize some significant benefits. Interestingly, in, interestingly enough, the largest percentage increases occur, occur with benefits that take longer to validate, reflecting the increasing length of time BIM has been in the market. And the increasing maturity of BIM users is evaluating its benefits. 
So basically, here is another in breaking up in specific categories of BIN investments over the two years. And we have a very high BIM engagement uh, contractors, which is in green, and the average contractor, which is in yellow. And basically, our development and internal collaborative BIM processes is 60% in BIM training, 61, and BIM software at 59. So a very high percentage for a relatively new process in the construction industry in AEC. So let's talk about your business. Um, we have a flow here that basically we've just talked about the trends impacting the construction industry. Uh, increased competitive pressure, supply chain realignment, lean practices, and the prevalence of BIM. Now, how do you succeed in this environment today? You have the drive effective execution of your work through all phases of the project, not only to increase your margins, but achieve profitability. Also, to satisfy your clients and stakeholders. Our construction customers are talking to us about how these issues are leading the industry to an inter <clears throat> intersection point, excuse me, a point where they need more integrated team structures to execute projects more efficiently and effectively. And now the technology is available to help them through bid. So I am going to do a short little demo here. And basically this will be illustrating the because realistically, not everybody is working in BIM, and some of our clients and consultants will be working in the AutoCAD or um, MicroStation platform. And so basically, I want to talk about uh, setting up your project correctly in BIM uh, when you're collaborating with a Autodesk or AutoCAD project. So I'm going to go to Revit for right now. And hopefully you'll be able to see my screen in Revit. And what I'm showing here is a site plan. And I'm going to go down here. And this is, a, this is actually a, a model, simulation model that we do in a uh, Revit architecture class. And uh, I will be using this for this uh, sharing coordinate simulation between uh, AutoCAD. And so I am going to go over to AutoCAD here. And I've laid these dimensions out and also kind of giving you the perspective of what, what the AutoCAD uh, consultant or a client or prime is actually using. So, and, and just to give you a little background of how AutoCAD uh, differs from Revit is that AutoCAD is, is basically the based off the 000 coordinate. And so which is down here where the circle is. And when you're working in a state plane or a surveying, you get a survey from uh, a company, uh, you're basically working out there in the real world. And so this is trying to simulate that. So basically my units are decimal feet and I'm at 120,000 feet to the north and 60,000. And so when I zoom in, you can see that I have an outline of a floor plan here in AutoCAD. And so I'm going to use Regen to uh, shrink up the, uh, the benchmark here. So this is basically simulating a monument or benchmark. And as when I select this in AutoCAD, I can see that the relative position of this over in my properties, I can see my position X is 60,000 and 120,000 uh, on my Y coordinate. And so the key here is to translate this information back into Revit, since Revit is using a completely different coordinate system. So I'm going to go back here. And so this is just the outline of the hotel, and usually this monument would not be so close to the building. It would be way out there, but for just for relative, uh, to showing you that it, 
is is working and the shared coordinates are functioning in Revit I wanted to actually place it on a grid line close to the actual hotel so I'm going to go back to Revit and so here I have uh, this and notice over here in the project browser if you're all familiar with Revit this should look uh, pretty familiar to you I am in the site plan right now and if you do not see usually um, this this project base point and survey base point will will actually be on um, by default in the site plan uh, if not you can go VG and go into your uh, site category and actually click that on and so if we I can actually demonstrate that real quick here shorten that up and so if I turn that off and apply the coordinates disappear and that's why you don't actually see that within all your uh, structural and floor plans there so I'm going to turn that back on and I'm going to click on there and when I hover over there and click it I actually see a project base point and so I'm going to make sure this is unclipped and I'm going to move that project base point over here and that way I'm actually not moving uh, the not moving the physical project right now since we're actually just moving the project base point unclipped and basically I want to get to this survey point and you notice here it's if I unclip this then you actually have the opportunity to change your bearing in here and uh, another thing to mention is if you click on your your uh, survey internal point you have the option to create multiple shared coordinates within the Revit environment very useful for huge projects I'm going to close that and I'm going to go to, I need a reference point, so let's go back to AutoCAD and I'm going to take this right here and I, I showed you before that we have a 60K uh, on the Y and or on the X and the 120 on the K, K on the Y, <laughs> so um, I'm going to go back here and translate that information back into Revit. And so I'm going to go to my first floor plan and basically that survey point, the monument in the AutoCAD project is uh, at A1 grid. So up here I'm going to draw a reference plane from on A, aligned with A and aligned with 1. So right here I, this tells me that uh, my reference planes are not on. So I'm going to go back into VG here. There we go. Annotation and let's see, reference planes. I'll turn on reference lines. Apply that. And if I, if I do a window around there, you can actually see that they are coming in. And so if I go back to my site plan, you can see that they've prop propagated throughout the uh, floors. Uh, reference planes are infinite and uh, that is the big advantage of them. Um, and so also one of the big advantages. Um, so I'm going to take this survey point and move it over here. And you want to make sure this is kind of tricky. You want to make sure this is actually dead center right on the survey point. Oh, actually click that in there and so I'm getting this extraneous if I click on this survey point I'm getting this extraneous number in here and so what we're going to do now is, is translate that information from AutoCAD those coordinates into the Revit project so uh, let's see let's go up to manage and it's under the project location panel I'm going to go into coordinates I'm going to specify the coordinates at a point and so we're going to use, and you may have to turn on thin lines for this to actually see, but uh, if you hover over this survey point, you actually get a, a highlighted little circle in there, and I'm going to click on that. 
And then this is your specify shared coordinates dialog. So within here, we're going to put in 120,000 feet and 60,000. Oops. Let's have that. And we've got an elevation. Uh, I'm going to bring this down to zero just by default. And we're on true north. Um, and we'll hit OK. So basically, you're telling Revit that we do have a survey point in AutoCAD that is located at that point in the world. And so now what we can do is save this. And we're going to leave this project point over here. Uh, this basically is not, um, not involved with this process right now. It's a different, uh, different point. And so we're going to bring in the AutoCAD project. And so I go up to Insert, Link CAD, and I'm going to make sure I have the right file here. Arc background, shared coordinates. Back to Revit. And so you're going to see this dialog down here, and um, there's a few options, a criteria you can you can put in here. So black and white, uh, Revit pretty much reads black and white. I'll leave that. Levels uh, and uh, pertaining to Bentley uh, and layers, Autodesk which I'm going to leave this all on, and then our units are feet. So, and actually let's, before we do that, I'm going to go back into the site plan, which I am in the site plan, so let's redo this. So I'm going to select my file, feet, uh, units, and you can also select auto detect, but I'm going to, for, for safety, I'm going to bring it into feet. And so in here we're going to do shared coordinates, because we have set up a shared coordinate unit and floor one. So you're going to get this uh, extraneous geometry and so basically this is telling you Revit, Revit's telling you it's way, you know, very far distance from the, pro from the actual elements of Revit. Um, so it is giving you a little accuracy uh, discrepancy here, but that, that should be just fine. And you want to make sure your crop view is it's checked off. So if I double click my middle mouse button here, um, that goes to extents and you can see that just to, for a check that we do have um, this auto, AutoCAD model in the correct place. So what we can do now is go into floor one, And to demonstrate it even more, I'm going to, and usually this would be covered in a template, um, but I'm going to go into visibility graphics and go into your uh, imported categories up here and collapse this and I'm going to select all. And I'm going to override this color so we can all see that this AutoCAD file has actually changed um, from the architect. And so this is basically a way for Revit to collaborate with a non-BIM uh, environment. And so at this point we can start aligning walls and, uh, and doing things like that. So um, a great, great tool to use, uh, shared coordinates. There's a lot more to this. Uh, this is just a very uh, skinny demonstration of this. but. It does give you an idea of how uh, the collaboration works uh, with, with AutoCAD customers. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint here. And we are going to talk about the workflow for BIM. So I, I BIM, BIM workflow, it's very different than traditional CAD. Um, it's something to get used to. It's a, it's a whole different workflow. And I have a lot of students actually in my, in my classroom coming from an AutoCAD environment going into the BIM world. And um, 
it, it really is, uh, it's, it, it's not that hard to grasp, it's just that the traditional method is, uh, you've been doing these projects for so long, and um, it's just a different way of doing things. And so, um, basically, the center of the project um, that we have here, and we have the big circle around here, the fabrication, field execution, planning, coordination, quantification, constructability, business development. And this all pertains to the BIM model. And, uh, and that's the fascinating thing about this and, and the accuracy and intelligence is basically you're able to uh, execute, um, get information, accountability, and uh, basically, and, and full circle all around to all your consultants and all your contractors and um, a, a much more collaborative, collaborative network to keep those costs down and accuracy up. And so connecting the processes and technologies uh, you're already using today through a BIM environment uh, with more information you work smarter making better decisions on how you execute work across all areas. And so basically we have project control, scheduling, estimating, and, and if you all know working in Revit, uh, you have a, um, a lot of uh, information that you can filter out and compile through your scheduling and uh, get, some, get some quantities that are very usable for your uh, estimating and, and for your contractor. So you also have the availability of all the technology with your phone, uh, the cloud services, A360, uh, which is proprietary to Autodesk, and um, of course your desktop and laptop. So let's talk about business development. Uh, one area where contractors are really starting to use BIM is business development. They're experiencing the power of BIM and winning work. Uh, they've begun using an integrated model-based approach to construction and their track record demonstrates how BIM capabilities have been helped help them deliver projects that are on schedule, on budget, and with a high level of quality and safety. These contractors are very successful at articulating the value of BIM and why their adoption of model-based technologies should give them an advantage over contractors competing primarily on cost. These, and basically cost uh, one stage, I guess single stage contracts they refer to it, We've kind of adopted that uh, in 2008 and 9 um, when there was a, a downfall in the economy and the construction. And, and now we're going back to more of a, um, a collaboration a contract um, and, and getting a, working with contractors more and getting, getting information uh, available to everybody on, on the team. And so basically everybody is is understanding each other's goals, which makes the, the collaboration work even better. So these contractors don't need to lower their level of service or costs. In fact, a model-based approach helps them deliver better service at lower costs, making them highly attractive to owners, increasingly particular about their requirements. So opportunity and benefits for business development, and this is something that uh, you're going to see more and more of. Um, your business development team can likewise start telling a new story to prospective clients by showcasing your BIM capabilities using model-based proposals. And a lot of you know a lot of the time I'll hear um, basically how do we how do we show this? How do we illustrate all this? And Revit has a, a great way of using its cameras and rendering and all the tools that it offers. And of course, you have uh, Navisworks for the 4D quality. Um, and then you have um, the, the, gra graphics, the graphics engine within Revit, which is very powerful and uh, giving you high quality showcasing. So to demonstrate your BIM capabilities to owners by taking them on a virtual tour of how your team uses 3D uh, to review, coordinate, schedule, and hand over projects and highlight the value of managing information throughout the entire project lifecycle. You can also tell them that you'll deliver not only a built asset but a digital one as well 
and this would be an as-built BIM model. By doing so, you're setting yourself apart in the RFP process, which may ultimately help you win more work, improve your cash flow, and develop trusting relationships with your clients. Now we're going to move on to a testimonial here, uh, Gilbane Building Company. Um, BIM helps us improve the way we manage projects uh, and deliver value to clients. So this is kind of a theme you're going to be hearing a lot. Um, while Gilbane knew that BIM was saving time and money by preventing problems on the construction pro projects, it didn't have concrete metrics until it undertook a cost-benefit analysis. And going into that a little bit, Gilbane compared several quantifiable factors such as schedules and numbers of RFIs on projects that did not or did and did not use BIM. Then it estimated the potential cost impact of these factors. And so basically were the, the reveals it's striking basically compared to traditional managed construction, BIM projects generated 50 to 70 percent fewer RFIs, which is pretty staggering, uh, which also meant fewer change orders. They shortened project schedules by as much as 10 percent, and the cost uh, impact was just as dramatic. So this is uh, propagating throughout the whole design team, and this is uh, a very impressive. The cost impact um, so on, on one of their financial institution projects alone, they estimated that the client saved more than $1 million. For Gilbane, BIM helps them improve the way they manage projects and deliver value to clients to every stage of the construction process. And they have the metrics to support, support it for their future bids. So let's talk about constructability modeling. So constructability, uh, what it's basically a reflection of, of the design. I mean, is this going to be is this going to be able to be built, uh, or is this just a conceptual idea? So this is where kind of you leave traditional methods in the past. This is where BIM takes off and soars, where you can actually uh, take a project and um, bring it to life uh, instead of just 3D capability. A lot of people will look at BIM and um, not really knowing the industry or knowing the BIM product or software and go, oh, well, this is just a 3D model. No, it's not just a 3D model. Uh, a lot of intelligent information to be extracted from this model to save money. So every project you need to know whether you can construct the building as it is designed. Um, so introducing constructability. By gaining this insight, you can more easily bid for work and deliver jobs on time and on budget. When you use 2D tools to assess design constructability, there's a lot of guesswork and inconsistency. And um, I have spent many a nights uh, working on 2D uh, models and trying to align those models with um, materials and schedules, and it's, uh, it's a lot of, a lot of uh, guesswork. So you can use this model-based central model approach, um, so it's easier to evaluate and enhance constructability of designs. And again, uh, opportunity, contribute construction knowledge to the design process and streamline pre-construction coordination. And of course, the benefits again gain insight early, and establish a platform for clash detection and construction analysis, and support more sustainable and cost-effective construction practices. And I'll tell you that building in the background looks like uh, the convention center um, working in downtown Seattle, but maybe possibly possibly another building. <laughs> so let's go into the constructability modeling here. Uh, so when we as construction professionals are given a project information, it is often in a state that is difficult to use immediately for our construction needs. If models are provided, they often lack detail or are built strictly for the purpose of communicating design intent and therefore need to be augmented to fit our needs. 
we will begin by acquiring our design intent and models that will be used as a backdrop for our constructability modeling. We can review the models in several ways. Interactively through A360, which is the cloud-based Autodesk service. Uh, we can also uh, view them in Navisworks and in Revit to continue to understand the information provided and begin our planning for constructability. And so create constructability details. And this is where the CDs start beginning. And now we can create and uh, parametrically link uh, information, sections, elevations, and details to our plans. So following that, we'll continue in Revit and extend the design uh, data and information in the model again, specific for construction and the detail needed in order to leverage for downstream activities like quantification, planning, and cost. We will finalize the workflow. Let me get catch up here. And um, finalize the workflow and, and data and models in our Navisworks environment and begin to explore the model with intuitive navigation and aggregation tools. So I don't know if you guys have stepped into the Navisworks world. Uh, it works using the switchback and, and Revit and Navisworks works very well as far as doing clash detection and compiling all those clashes and giving them a category as far as has this been taken care of? Um, do, do we need to look at this any further or is this a pass? And so Navisworks also gives you a, a very good visualization of, um, of clash detection and we're actually going to going to go into the Revit model here real quick. And just to give you a quick demonstration, Revit actually does have a clash detection. Um, I'm going to close this file. And we're going to do a simulation of a central model here. And again, this is the uh, hotel that, that we use in our uh, teaching lessons. And if you absorb, observe here, we have a real 3D model here. And um, we've got, uh, I highlighted the structural aspect of this in orange. And you can see if we go up to manage, manage links, we have a real Revit model in here that's linked in. Uh, it's a structural model. And so if we look in here, I, I made pretty, a pretty obvious mistake in here. And you might be able to pick it out. But basically, you can see two columns aligning here. And so you've got interference, uh, possibly interference with these openings, and uh, plus the double column, uh, you know, to say the least. So basically what we're going to do here is go to collaborate and we're going to do a quick interference check. Now this is something we can do natively right in Revit. So we're going to run interference check. And this is a stripped down version of what you're going to see in Navisworks. So basically we're going to have an A and B category. So we've got our current project and so we're going to test it against a central structural. And so within our current project, uh, we can check off any amount of these categories here. We're going to do, uh, let's say, uh, let's look for windows down at the bottom. And then we're, we're going to clash detect it against um, structural columns. And hit OK. So we've got category one against category two. And it, it's coming up with uh, some basic clashes here. So let's go and uh, collapse this first one. So if I click on here, again, this is a mid-sized model here. So we are able to, it kind of jumps out at you. And so we're clicking the column that's clashing. And then you can also click the window that clashes. So it goes right to it. And if you want an even closer examination of what's happening, you can click on 
and toggle back and forth. And again, this is going to be the reason we're seeing those amount of clashes in here. Uh, let's just run this quick again here. Structural columns, windows. Oops, I did it against the current project, which is not going to work. And structural columns. Um, so I'm going to collapse some of these. And you can see it's just going down the line here. Each floor is presenting itself as a clash. So very valuable to run uh, when you're when you're in the middle of of uh, CDs and, and running this thing before you send it off on this, um, and then you works to get a, a a much more detailed export report. And so you can do an export here and send it out to an H HTML. And so just wanted to give you a quick demonstration of the interference checking. Uh, while you're working, and, and you can run this right at your terminal. So this is uh, don't no other software required. So let's jump back into PowerPoint, and so we're gonna go through Barton Marlow. Um, another example, another tribute to the influences of BIM comes from Barton Marlow. Um, Celebrating, they're actually right now celebrating 90 years of building construction marvels, which is very impressive. Congratulations to you guys. And before starting construction on steel production lines at the Severstol Dearborn plant, Michigan based general contracting company, Barton Marlowe revisited the pre construction act aspects of the project using a BIM based process. So for the concrete portions, and you're going to see a lot more, uh, I think, a lot more workflow with uh, post tension um, and and uh, working with post tension, developing families uh, for strands. Um, so I, I hear a lot of that demand in my classes too, and I'm not I'm surprised. Maybe it's out there, but I haven't heard much development going on in that. Um, but Barton Marlow created a detailed structural model and Autodesk Revit structure, and I identified in the model the pre-built portions of the lines and the 35,000 yards of new structural concrete its team would install. With BIM, Barton Marlow was able to visualize, explore, and understand the project characteristics before construction. So as you can see, for instance, we're able to prepare layouts for concrete pours 88% faster. So a very impressive number right there. So quantification, uh, very, very useful and cost estimating. Um, and and uh, getting, getting your quantities, you know, getting, getting some prices on this. And so Revit, considering it is a parametric BIM model, um, we're getting some very intelligent information extracted from this model. Um, Navisworks has also the capability of quantifications. Um, so let's talk about quantification. Accurate cost forecasting early in the project has a significant impact on executing the work. To gain a deeper understanding about the building on a granular level early in the project, you'll want to access new levels of information plus leverage your existing information and estimating systems. These can be sophisticated systems such as Sage Timberline or simple systems based on Excel. And so the advantage of this is you can run quantification and run scheduling at any time during the phasing of the project and get very valuable information. And so at that point, that may direct you to make uh, a change in the project early on and a very um, cost-saving, cost-effective um, tool for Revit. Uh, the point is, is that in a model-based approach, you can use Systems already in place, but bring a more intelligent and streamlined approach to the quantification and estimating process. So opportunity benefits, and you can see this. We've gone over some of this. 
Uh, with a model-based approach, your estimators can make more accurate cost estimates by collecting and synchronizing design data and images as they calculate material quantities for all building systems and components. Conceptual estimates can help you evaluate, evaluate project feasibility and profitability. As the project progresses, you can add additional levels of detail to the preliminary estimates and ultimately generate production plans using this information. At all stages, you can generate bill of materials and quantify the area of spaces using the project model. And we'll go over one more accolade here. Uh, uh, McCall and Gordon Construction. Um, and so they're using BIM, another eight high number, high percentage number savings. Um, so it, this is Kansas-based construction firm. Um, they found that using a model-based approach to estimating paid off a big way. The firm performed real-time estimating on Revit models about 60% faster than it would using traditional methods. The BIM manager on the project noted that using BIM allowed the firm to make sure the budgets were aligned with actual cost. Consider how estimating quickly and accurately early and often can impact your projects. When you can have more certainty, certainty and control over estimates, you'll have a much better understanding of long-term costs. And, that, and just to add there, BIM manager, uh, BIM coordinator, a very, very valuable person to have in your firm um, to, to collaborate with the BIM team and make sure everybody's getting the most up-to-date information. Um, and uh, you always need, more than ever in the BIM process, uh, within the central model, you need a BIM coordinator, BIM manager to oversee. So the PPI group, talking about coordination, the PPI group can help you understand how building systems, materials, and machines come together before work begins and can save you time, money, and materials through education. With effective coordination, you'll experience fewer RFIs and change orders as well as reduce your risk of unforeseen conflicts, changes, and scheduling delays that can drive up cost of materials, labor, and overall project costs. And so you're hearing multidiscipline uh, coordination a lot, and that is that is really the goal here. Um, using a model-based approach, uh, multi-trade uh, coordination is critical. It helps you understand the location of the architectural and mechanical elements and uh, where they sit in relationship of the structural elements. So it all comes together. They, inevitably, you'll find clashes that you can resolve and in a collaborative method way with trades in a streamlined way before you get the actual work to the field. As a result, you'll have fewer RFIs again and change orders once construction begins. So here's a little desktop uh, workflow of integration here. Uh, view and analyze the coordination model. And so basically this is something that uh, uh, stakeholders can view. Navis works very easy to, to run this program. Um, and, and you get to visualize and see this model and then pop it up to the cloud and share it with your whole team. So you've got Autodesk uh, Navis works manage, uh, find and manage conflicts again. You've got the assign and resolve conflicts. So the workflow is going from Navisworks now into the actual iterations into Revit. And, um, and Revit and working with Revit and Navisworks together, a pretty seamless uh, workflow. Um, they've had a lot of time to tweak and uh, to build that, those platforms. And so they, they have a very, very high collaborative uh, value working together on a project. Reporting and communication, uh, Autodesk Navisworks. Um, of course, you've got the Freedom and then Buzzsaw. And so you've, you've got a, depending on your workflow, uh, you've got 
all sorts of different ways to get that information out there. And so let's talk about the cloud. And so uh, I don't know if many of you have experienced working uh, with glue and field and things like that. Um, basically, you can gain even more project efficiency by extending your multidiscipline coordination in the cloud. Uh, the traditional collaboration and coordination practice is one where all the distinct disciplines share their models with each other in linear succession. At any moment in time, team members might be working on a different locally stored version of the model. This approach has the potential to create inefficiency, let alone lawsuits, and expose all parties to more risk as the chances of different versions of the model and the information within them become increasingly out of sync, which is something uh, that makes me even nervous to think about. In a multidiscipline cloud-enabled process, there is no more sending around of files and uh, central gatekeepers. Uh, no more do I have the, have the right version. There is only one model in the cloud that the entire team interacts in parallel. With Autodesk data-centric cloud-based BIM collaboration, A360, and coordination workflows, the extended project team can improve coordination and communication with one-click desktop or mobile access to review the latest coordination project models and run clashes in real time, promoting time and money savings on customer projects. So another real benefit, you don't really necessarily have to be in the office all the time. People are always uh, you know, visiting clients, going out to the job site, and basically um, you can check all this information uh, on the go. And of course, not driving, of course. So we talked about the, I'm going to go over to planning and logistics. Um, cloud, I'm going to go over this real quick here, uh, BIM 360, and I mentioned that before, uh, Glue product, which we'll talk about at the end of this presentation. and. Um, uh, using Glue, BIM, BIM 360 with uh, Autodesk Revit, and also working with Navisworks on tablets and phones. So planning and logistics. Historically, scheduling and logistics has been a big problem for many companies. Schedules that are out of date almost the minute they're printed are nail, nailed on job site trailers. They'll utilize bar charts that fail to show how or why certain construction activities are linked in a given sequence and do not capture the spatial components related to these activities. In contrast, a model-based approach brings a visual element to planning and managing the project site early in the process. It gives you a much better way to sequence trades and work setups, explore trade-offs as you consider how to execute the work. With a central-based approach, model-based, you can even co connect scheduling tools that are critical to work execution and tie those tools to visual information contained in the 3D model. All stakeholders can visualize the schedule and logistics in 4D and therefore can clearly understand the sequence, logistics, and relationships between all activities as well as identify potential problems. And I'll give you the workflow, again, of planning and logistics. Again, Autodesk Revit, Navisworks. Working sequencing, scheduling analysis, Autodesk Nav Navisworks and third parties. And Revit. Assign and resolve conflicts. Again, viewing and compiling clashes in Autodesk Navisworks. And sharing the model in the cloud through 360 glue and field. So we're going to talk about field management and uh, project quality. Okay, so this is a this is a big topic too. Um, safety overall success depends. Uh, in no small part on whether field personnel 
have access to information, whether they understand that information, and whether they get it in a timely manner. The point is, is that in a model-based approach, you can use systems already in place, but bring a more intelligent, streamlined approach to the quantification and estimating process. And we have field management here. Using BIM and uh, with, with cloud-based collaboration mobile technologies, you can give your site superintendents, foremen, uh, access to all information they need to help them efficiently drive the work at a job site. You can also solve the challenge of getting essentially assembly instructions the last 100 yards, in quotes, from the job site trailer to the executing, executing the work and by conveying more accurate and up-to-date information in an easy-to-understand visual way, the trades and craftspeople actually executing the work. You can have fewer misunderstandings and delays. Everything is all up-to-date. It's all um, coming to you, and the latest information is, is uh, driving it. With, uh, with Autodesk Field Management Workflow Construction, which we'll go over in a little bit, uh, industry professionals can transform the delivery and oversight of construction by combining cloud-based collaboration with mobile technologies at the point of construction. Automation of field processes such as quality, safety, and commissioning checklists. Uh, distribution of plan, plans and drawings and mobile model access can help provide measurable time and cost savings for construction and capital projects of all types. Field management workflow. So we have the documents. So we're going to start with viewing construction documents within BIM 360 field. Uh, we, we will work on the iPad uh, in an offline or disconnected mode where you can work locally without the need to be connected to Wi-Fi or cell service to access the project data. We can pan and zoom around documents as needed very quickly and efficiently. And note that the BIM 360 field website is the place that hosts all the data. But on the iPad, you can have contextual information. This means that you only need to have the data you, you care about for a specific action activity, day or set of tasks you are working on. Making the system faster and more efficient for your needs now. This is a great way to share construction documentation out to the field users and allows them to view and reference the project plans right at their fingertips. Quality, safety, and programs here. So next we will complete a quality inspection and start with a set of templates for quality control checklists. These are either pulled from your company's master library, imported from Excel, or you can leverage our built-in content. The point is, is they can be configured by your project team and can be specific to the project. Checklists are the checklists are the mechanism for understanding and standardizing the actions and items to be inspected in the field at the point of construction and provide a mechanism for implementing, managing, and maintaining a quality of safety. And of course, we have the commissioning and handover using Field 360 and Autodesk BIM 360 Field in collaboration with Navisworks back in the office. And our last testimonial hall, Skanska, Building USA. So for almost a decade, Skanska, a global top 20 general contractor, has been at the forefront in exploring the use of tablet computers for construction. In the past three years, the firm has moved from Exploration to explosion as hundreds of projects around the world are leveraging field management software from Bella Systems, now Autodesk BIM 360 field, and iPads to help drive programs for quality, safety, and commissioning. Field BIM and access to construction documentation. This rigorous assessment of the use of innovative technologies, including BIM, mobile electronic resource stations, and BIM 360 field uh, were used on the North Carolina State University's Hunt Library Projects, Hunt Library Projects, excuse me, and was carried out in 2011. So let's talk about 
some solutions here that are provided by Autodesk for construction. And we have the building design suites here and the BIM 360 field. We have the building, the ultimate design, which um, gives you a, a highly collaborative list of uh, applications to use from. And the 360 glue, which is the cloud-based, uh, also another cloud-based um, collaboration tool provided by Autodesk. So a comprehensive portfolio for building tools combines CAD tools and powerful BIM processes. Autodesk Revit, a single application that includes features for architectural design, MEP, and structural engineering and construction. Autodesk Navisworks basically integrates data from multiple sources to facilitate whole project review coordination, 5D analysis, and construction simulation. Autodesk 360 connects the desktop to services in the cloud and mobile devices through Autodesk subscription. So pretty much an all-encompassing uh, solution. Uh, powerful workflows, building design suite connects products more smoothly through better interoperability. And then we have the Autodesk 360 cloud-based framework that provides customers with a powerful set of tools and services that can dramatically improve the way they work and share their work on demand. With the Autodesk 360, customers can extend and connect workflows on the desktop to virtually infinite computing power in the cloud, helping them rapidly design, visualize, simulate, and share their ideas almost anywhere and anytime. And a list of our partners here, Faro, Topcon, Autodesk, and we are a gold partner. And we have Autodesk, of course, and Bluebeam. So with Autodesk software services, you can win more work and deliver projects. But again, it starts with the people. And here at the PPI group, we uh, make huge uh, leaps and bounds to try to uh, get that uh, intelligence out there to our building community. And so I wanted to thank you everybody for, for uh, spending time with me and listening to the BIM uh, concepts and uh, what Autodesk and PPI has to offer. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, thank you, Wendy. So I've got um, I've got a question here for you. Okay. Um, so um, while I'm pulling that up, um, we do have our, our contact information up here. So we have two offices, one um, based out of Portland and one based out of Seattle. So uh, we've got good coverage here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and then our, our website. Um, so feel free to use any of any of those uh, avenues of contact to reach out to us as a, as a follow-up. And again, I just want to remind you that we will be sending out a follow-up email um, probably tomorrow morning. It'll have the link to this recorded session, and then it also will have, um, it'll have that full report that Patrick was, was referencing earlier in the presentation. So um, one of the questions that we have is please explain what is 4D? How is this different from 3D? What are the specific graphic differences and benefits? So good question. And uh, you'll be hearing of this, you know, 4D. I think we're all the way up to 6D. I, basically, it's a it's a more of a marketing thing, but uh, it's um, to explain it, it it's uh, related back to time. And um, so basically, you can do time sequences. Um, and animations within Navisworks and uh, actually do the sequence of construction uh, before you actually send all your equipment out there. Uh, you can do your, your time simulations uh, within Navisworks. And that is what they're referring to. And 3D, of course, is three dimensions, uh, three dimensional model. Okay. And um, and 
you know that I'm not technical, so does that answer the question regarding the graphic differences and benefits? Yeah, so um, so so basically, 4D is taking advantage of of 3D. Um, it, it's it's basically uh, integrating those those together, and but it's also adding that time that time sequence factor um, as, as far as um, you know you know when when put, putting the different sequences of construction and being able to illustrate that in an actual program which you can actually link the Navisworks um, to a to a project's Microsoft projects file too so you can actually uh, communicate back and forth with with that to to give you a, a better idea of the 4d concept okay um, another question that um, in I think I can even answer this one myself. Um, so they're asking, can we um, obtain a PDF of the slide presentation? Um, and so the answer is absolutely. We can include that in that follow-up email. Uh, we'll include where you can download um, the PDF version of this presentation as well. So um, I know we ran a little bit late. I apologize for that. Um, any last minute questions? We'll, we'll wait here just a, a few more seconds here to see if anybody else has any questions uh, before we wrap things up. If um, Feel free to reply to any of the emails that you receive from me, um, whether it's um, part of the invite um, to this or the follow up that, that'll come out tomorrow if you have questions um, downstream. I've got um, a, a large team of folks here that um, can help address any any questions, any concerns, um, and any issues with moving forward and and be, and you know doing that BIM collaboration. So I don't and, see any more um, I don't see any more questions. Patrick, do you have any last last thoughts as a wrap up? Yeah, yeah sure. I, I just wanted to conclude. I know there was a lot of business and um, marketing talk there. Basically, I mean, um, the article the econ from the Economist uh, Intelligence Unit there, great article. Um, basically, the conclusion of all this is, um, you know, we need to, you know, ad adopting productivity, enhancing tools and methodologies, and education is, is a big key here, and understanding how to use the new tools. Um, you hear a lot of uh, pizzazz with these tools, but to actually get down and actually work work together and, and test these tools out is um, very, very useful on a, a real live project. So um, just, just something to, to wrap that up with. Excellent point. Um, and um, a great segue to me letting our folks know that um, we've got, you know, within our, our two offices in Portland and Seattle, we've got the largest training centers in the Northwest. So uh, we, we cover all the Autodesk products for the AEC, and we'd be happy to discuss any, any training needs. Um, I do have a message here that we'll follow up with offline um, to one of our participants asking um, exactly that about some additional training. So we'll get in touch with with you. And I think we're going to go ahead and, and conclude the presentation then and end the webinar. Thank you so much for attending. We appreciate it and I apologize again for running just a little bit late. I know your time's important. And um, please visit our website and, and see if there's any other events um, or informational webinars that um, are is of interest to you that might be able to, to help your business. So again, thank you and we look forward to seeing you or hearing from you um, in the coming weeks.